Thanks for joining me today as we explore the Lipsick Edwards Gamper Memorial location of the Putnam County District Library. My name is Ruth Wilhelm and I'm the local history and genealogy librarian. So let's take a look at this family. To better understand the things that we have seen, heard, or felt in this house, we must look at its past and those who lived there. Moving from Licking County, then to Morrow County, and in 1861 moving to Van Buren Township, Thomas and his wife Isabella, along with their children, John, William, Joseph, Mary, and Sarah, began farming a short distance east of Lipsick, which was plotted in 1857. And here we have a picture of Isabel. She was the mother of John who built this house that we're talking about today. And an interesting fact is the land that the public school was built on was the property of Thomas and Isabel. And all their children became teachers for various periods of time. John first taught school in Belmore. And we have some tales of the Edwards family. Um, we have a couple quotes here. There were lots of snakes in the big woods of the old black swamp. Two poisonous snakes were rattlesnakes and copperheads. Grandfather didn't seem to mind the rattlers because they always gave warning before striking. He utterly detested copperheads, which would strike along without warning from the grass or weeds. Once along a country road, he saw two copperheads in the road together. He promptly killed both snakes and was fond of telling of this experience. Another one of the favorite stories of Thomas Edwards' family was about the wild turkey hunter who had shot no game and was returning home one evening with only one shot left in his gun. Suddenly he came upon five wild turkeys on a low limb. He took careful aim and split the limb with his last bullet. The loss of the toes of the turkeys became fast in the crack of the split limb, and he captured all five and took them home. Another favorite story was about a wild turkey trap, which was built in the rails in the form of a square. Rails were put over the top of the pen to make a firm roof. The ditch had been dug from the outside into the pen, and corn was scattered in the ditch. The turkeys would eat the corn in the ditch on the outside and then follow the corn into the pen. Once in the pen, they would become excited and try to fly out, never looking to the ditch through which they had entered the pen. They stayed in that pen until the trapper came to get them. Another one of Thomas's tall tales was about a big mosquito that ambushed an early pioneer working near his cabin. The man jumped behind a tree. The mosquito, chasing him, landed on the other side of the tree and stuck his bill clear through the tree to get the settler, who promptly took his axe and bent his bill against the tree. Therefore, the mosquitoes flew away with the tree. Well, those are just a couple fun stories that, that Thomas um, and his family would tell. So they were very colorful people. Next, we're going to talk about John Edwards, the builder of this house. In 1894, he built this where it was considered country on what was called Defiance Street, later becoming Main Street. Trees stood tall and a few trees were 55 inches in diameter. Bears, beavers, and snakes still lurked here. He is the second son of Thomas, and he made his mark in Putnam County history as an industrialist and a financial developer, not only in Lipsick, but in other locations. His early life was spent on Thomas's farm, his father. His larger business career did not begin until he was 28 years old. And this was in 1878, in which year he purchased interest in a Steve manufacturing business of Henry and Jonas Lenhart. 
At the time of its organization, they controlled 12 factories located at Lipsick, Columbus Grove, Continental, and other counties, and employed 100 men. In 1887, this company purchased the Bank of Lipsick. So, obviously, it was a very profitable business. And in 1890, they placed a state factory in Pleasant Bend. By 1891, they had built factories in Kaleida and Avis and had organized the Continental Bank. By 1892, Elm Center State Factory was purchased. And in the same year, they purchased factory in Michigan. Making abundant at the time, elm trees into barrels that were sold to transport corn, wool, tomatoes, and potatoes on the newly completed railroad. The growth of this company was very rapid. In 1895, after only nine years, they employed 1,000 men with a yearly payroll of $175,000. Today, that would be $5,377,395. At this time, the company was one of the largest landowners, with holdings including extensive timber and farmland in not only Putnam County, but also Henry County and Defiance. Later, they would own 90,000 acres in various states. They also own stock in banks in Kaleida and a bank in Toledo. They also had stock in the National Lime and Stone Company in Cary, the Buckeye National Bank in Finley, Toledo Machine and Tool Company, and the National Quarries of Lima. So, you can see how far this family was branching out in the financial world. The company grew to the largest of its kind in the world and was said that the Edwards family and the company contributed liberally to not only public improvements, but also helped some private people too. But their goal was always to better the community. Soon, John became an active and important developer of the banking interest in Toledo and Finley. His untimely death on September 30th in 1901 rocked not only the business world, but the entire community. At the time of his death, the Stave Mill Company owned 23 mills, and he was the president of the Buckeye Stave Factory, along with the Bank of Lipsick, and superintendent of the Sunday School at the Methodist Church. He was also a delegate to the General Conference and a trustee of Ohio Wesleyan University. John Edwards had married Mary Lenhart and had four sons, Henry Clyde, Thomas Charles, William Earl, Oliver Pearl, and the later, these last two uh, were twins. William E. Edwards went by Bill, although those of us in the library call him Earl, and was a teacher in the high school at Lipsick. And Oliver Pearl, who went by Jimmy, or OP, was one of the leading directors of the Temco Electric Motor Company here in Lipsick. He married Josephine and had one daughter, Harriet. Later, we would see how much she plays a part in this drama. Now, John was one of the Methodist Church's most zealous supporter and took earnest part in numerous lines of activity. He gave not only his money, but he gave his time and benefit of his great business ability. And the local congregation felt a real sense of bereavement upon the passage of his life. He did much of the work securing the new pipe organ for the Methodist Church, but he never had the pleasure of hearing it as it was played for the first time at his funeral. He was generous to private um, people, as I've said, but also to colleges and churches. He donated the land to the town for the Lipsick Methodist Church parking lot, 
and when the town needed money to finish the swimming pool, John donated it. Now we get down to the last Edwards to live in this house, William Bill Earl Edwards, whose presence is still felt here. He was a graduate of Lipsick High School and Ohio Westland University, graduating there in 1903. Now this entire family liked to travel. As we will see, um, Bill attended Yale for a year, then he decided to study piano in a year in New York. He taught mathematics and language at Lipsick High School until World War I when he went to France with the YMCA because he did not qualify for duty. He still wanted to um, support America, so that was what he chose to do. Following the war, he taught in Miami, Florida and he returned to Lipsick as a teacher in 1931 and remained there until he retired in 1948. He also was much like his father. He was on several boards. He was the director uh, on the board of directors of the Buckeye State Company, the Bank of Lipsick, the Continental Land and Fur Company of Toledo and New Orleans and the one in New Orleans covered a large acreage of timberland in the Louisiana Delta. Uh, he was the donor of the O.P. Edwards Athletic Field. This was in memory of his brother Oliver Pearl, and he contributed the land for the Buckeye Park. He was a former organist and director of the Lipsick United Methodist Church and sponsored the W. Edwards Chair at Seoul Seminary, Seoul, Korea, as well as the W.E. Edwards Chair of the Church Music at the Theology Seminary in Ashbury, Kentucky. So he not only contributed to Lipsick and Putnam County, but he felt compelled to help as many people as he could. Though it is not known how much this house cost to build, John spent $21,000 laying a one-mile fine sawed stone sidewalk from his house into town. Now he loved his wife dearly and he did not want her to get her skirts dirty as she strolled to town. So for comparison, the city hall uh, was built around the same time and cost $6,183. That's less than a third of the cost of a sidewalk. Um, that sidewalk today would have cost you $630,280. So in uh, William Edwards, I'm sorry, William Earl Edwards, died in March of 1975. Harriet Edwards Gamper, which was his brother O.P.'s daughter, along with two nephews, deeded the house to the town for a public library or a museum. Luckily, we are in there today and we get to see this house. So we're going to take a tour of the house right now. So here we have uh, the front doors. Uh, we will see um, here in a moment these windows. Um, They're exceptionally beautiful, but it's very hard to see in this picture. We take a look at the wraparound porch that goes all the way around. Um, we can see the scroll work that was here. Here are those windows. Um, this is cranberry etched glass. These were shipped over from France. This is the transit on top of the front door. And on top of that um, is J.E. for John Edwards. Here is the turret, the underneath of the gazebo. Um, and they call this the Hershey Kiss style turret. 
I don't know what they called it before Hershey Kisses came along, but that's what it's called now. Here we can see um, the side of the house and we get to see what's been added. So this part of the house all the way to, there's a little line here, is the original house. This little piece was added to make a men's restroom for the library. And then we have this addition, which houses the children's and the teens uh, books in the library. Here you can see some of the fancier work that was done on this. And remember, this house was built in 1895, so it is all hand done. No Menards, Lowe's at that time. Here we have school work and spool work. And here we have a, a closer view of this one. Very decorative trims in the house. And here we have a copy of what this house looked like when Mrs. John Edwards lived here. Now Mary had it decorated very nice outside. Um, it may be a little hard to see, but there are canopies over the windows. Um, this is the sunroom. And, sorry, here is the fountain. Now, right now, all that's left is this base. And I'll show you a close-up in a moment. Um, but there was a fountain in here with a statue at the top. And this sat right beside that wraparound porch and the turret. Back in the back here, we can see summer kitchen, and then they had a carriage house. Later, they would have a tennis court. So very fancy indeed for 1894. So here's a close-up of that fountain base. It's iron, and if we look closely, there are frogs and turtles in it. Um, that is all the way around, and yes, unfortunately, that's all that's left, but they use it for a flower bed, so you can actually still see it. So if we go in the house, um, this is one of the restrooms with an original marble uh, basin here, a sink. Now, we're going into what they called their dining room. Um, these are the windows. This light back through here um, is the sunroom. And there is a rounded case that was um, delivered from France. It was a china cabinet. Beautiful and still in the library today. We use it for displays. And if we look towards the ceiling, um, we see there's fleur-de-lis. Um, it's very fancy. This is gold trimmed. And even the ceilings had stenciling on them. So obviously no expense was spared on this. Now, when we look at the corners of the dining room, which is where our circulation desk is today, you can see that there are lions in the corners and they have light bulbs in their mouths. And yes, they still do work. This is the next room. Um, you can see the elaborate detailing. This is all painted. Um, and this is gold trimmed up on the ceiling. And here's a little more um, of some of the hand-carved things you'll be able to see in the library. Very fine craftsmanship. And here's a close-up of that ceiling, and you can really tell um, that it's gold. So there's a window seat in this room, 
and these are the stained glass panels above them. And this is the fireplace that is in this room. Also along with the fireplace, we have furnaces. Now remember, this is 1894, when people did not have electricity or running water in their house. These people were fortunate enough to have the best of everything. Now, going into um, what we call the living room is a beautiful blue tiled fireplace. This tile was imported from Italy. Uh, the fireplace itself is hand carved. Here we see some of the scroll work. And the floors were all parquet. All through the house, this happens to be um, the entrance uh, by the front door. This is the ceiling that's in this entryway. And again, we can see um, beautiful painting on the top, um, again, with the gold trims. Now here we have the cherry staircase that leads up to the second floor. You'll notice there is a rail here in the next picture. Um, we'll be able to see what that looks like. Again, all hand carved and this particular one was, was painted. Um, this particular light, I was doing a program in Lipsic one day and I checked the light before my program because I was going to bring the people out to see it because this is a part that is closed off in the library. Um, I started my program, um, which many things happened to it, but when I brought the people in to see this lamp, it would not turn on. So um, it was night. It was an evening program, so we all got our cell phones out so we could kind of light up the staircase so you could see. Um, after the program, after I put everything away, I went back to this lamp. It turned on. So evidently, Earl did not want me to show off his house. He was a very private person. So here is a finer detail of that trim that goes up the staircase. This goes up the first part of the staircase, and then this goes up. Uh, on the second part of the landing. So now we're going to visit the second floor, which very few people get to go up to. Now uh, there were bedrooms upstairs and an office, and the bedrooms each had a sink with running water, and again just a picture of the floors. Here is one of the um, lights that were original to the house. As we can see, they like transoms. They're in many of, above many of the doors in the house. And this one I missed, um, a very ornate a lighting fixture in one of the bedrooms. Now this ceiling is a beautiful ceiling. And one would expect it to find maybe in an entranceway, um, something special. This is their ceiling in the bathroom on the second floor. So very, very fancy. Uh, here's one of the furnaces that they had in the house. And just showing here again um, all the carving on the doors. Another one with a transom on top. We had an arch entranceway into this room. And even the closet in this room has an elaborate floor. This is just one of the ceilings. 
And now we're going to visit the servants' quarters. So, this is 1894, where most people, again, do not have electricity, do not have running water, um, are, are lucky to be getting by, and these people have servants. Gotta love this family. So here we see this staircase for the servants. They um, didn't go all out for their servants, did they? It's a very plain um, staircase. It is an awkward one to walk up. Uh, the, the height of the step is a little, little interesting. And I can't imagine having to carry anything up and down staircases like this. Uh, but you will notice here, this is the door from the second floor that goes up to the servants' quarters. You see there's a lock on it. So the, the family, the John Edwards family, could actually lock that door so the servants didn't come through and bother them. There is one way up and one way down. So if you were up there and they locked the door, you were up there till the family decided it was time for you to come down. And here, um, to what it looks like today, um, you can see that it's pine all the way around. All the walls are covered like this. Okay, so we've went through the house, we've done a tour, we've learned a little bit about the people. Um, they're very giving, they were very rich. And next week, join me as I talk about the experiences the staff has had in the house. Um, and we did a ghost hunt adventure uh, with the outcast paranormal and the toledo ghost hunters they let myself and one other staff member join them for many hours of ghost hunting i will show you the um, types of equipment we used and we will go through um, what we heard what we felt and what we saw but remember this was a very interesting family, and I hope you join me. Now, if you have any programs that you would like to see, please contact me at pcdlh at seolibrariees.org. Thank you, and have a great day.